out here going for a little canoe ride with my dog Millie. Hey, Millie, look over here. Hey, this is Millie. Anyway, I suppose I better get back inside so we can get to our next book, huh? All right, I'll see you in a little bit. I am off the water and back in my house and ready to read you your book for book three. Um, wondering when we look at this, by just looking at the front cover, do you think you can maybe guess what it might be about? Um, this book is a fiction book. So the things that happen in this book would not happen in real life. We are going to have talking animals and um, just, just things that wouldn't normally happen. Uh, it's also a book that has rhyming patterns. In other words, I'll end a sentence or a phrase with a word and then the, a, a phrase or a sentence or two later will end with a word that has that same sound, ending sound. I don't know if you've, you've covered rhyming words in school before, but just some simple ones would be like um, hat and bat. These are more complicated rhyme, rhyming words. They're a little bit, um, they're a little tougher to read, but I want you to listen for it and see if you can hear some of the rhymes. And um, this book was written by, it's called One Dog Canoe. And it's written by Mary Casanova and pictures are or illustrations are are by Ard Hoyt. It's kind of an interesting name, Ard Hoyt. Okay, so let's get started. One dog canoe. Hmm. I set off one morning in my little red canoe. My dog wagged his tail. Can I come too? You bet, I said. A trip for two. Just me and you. Kind of like my dog and me today, right? Not really. I dipped my paddle into ribbons of blue. Beaver stopped chewing. Can I come too? There's not much room. It's a one dog canoe. But with a slap and a swim, Beaver scrambled in. Now, I wanted to show you something too here. Um, when we zoom in on the pages and you see these pages, um, there's a little frog in every single one of these pages. So see if you can find him. Kind of like our last book had a little squirrel. This one has a little frog. I swished past ferns where dragonflies flew. Loon stretched her wings. Can I come too? I doubt you'll fit. It's a one beaver, one dog canoe. But with a woohoo flap, Loon landed on my lap. Where's our little frog here? Oh, he's right here. He's catching a dragonfly. Silently, we glided under silver webs of dew. Wolf peered from the pines. Can I come too? Maybe next time. It's a one loon, one beaver, one dog canoe. But like an arrow on the wind, Wolf bounded in. Our frog has kind of a funny look on his face there. I don't think he likes the idea of a wolf jumping in there. I wouldn't. Still I paddled on in my little red canoe. Bear slid down a tree. Can I come too? We're pretty darn full. It's a one wolf, one loon, one beaver, one dog canoe. See Frog hiding back there? But with a grunt, thump, kawump, bear dropped on his rump. Mm -hmm. 
I J stroked and C stroked. What else could I do? Moose lifted his head. Can I come too? A J stroke and a C stroke are different ways that you paddle your canoe. You'll do us all in. It's a one bear, one wolf, one loon, one beaver, one dog canoe. What do you think's gonna happen? I like also how Bear is kind of more interested in the in the lunch. He's he's over here chewing on one of her sandwiches. But with a toss of his rack, Moose climbed in the back. Wow. Here's our friend the frog. And when Moose climbed in, what happened? Bear started losing some of the food. There's a sandwich and an apple and a cherry pie. We teetered and tottered. I glared at my crew. Frog hopped to a rock. Can I come too? What can it hurt? It's just a little frog, right? I like looking at some of the facial expressions too, like especially on the dog. Frog, can't you see? It's a one moose, one bear, one wolf, one loon, one beaver, one dog canoe. But with a leap, plop, swoosh a bang flop. <laughs> what happened? We sputtered, splashed, swam, drip dried on the sand. Sorry, Beaver said, we should have listened to you. Guess you were right. It is a one dog canoe. I started to grin. It's okay. We had a good swim. Bear's upset because the lunch is gone. <laughs> I like the bear. Then together we bailed till my vessel was dry, and with a push, push and a swoosh glide, we waved goodbye. I set off that evening as the northern lights grew, just me and my pal in a one dog canoe. Something I want you to notice about this too is the animals that are in this book, the um, the loon and the wolf and the bear and the moose and the frog, um, the beaver, they're all animals that you would find in Minnesota. So if you went out on a lake or down a river, you might see some of those animals. Probably not a moose because they're kind of rare here, but they do live in Minnesota too. So we will move on to our snack time. Okay, we're back. Um, <clears throat> time for a snack. And I'm wondering if you can guess what I'm gonna make. You'll have an apple, a green apple, a fruit roll-up, chocolate chips, and grapes. And then I also have some little plastic toothpicks. Um, these are blue, which are not ideal for this, but I figured I would save the cool green ones for you. So, Anyway, here's what we're going to do. Um, we also have our plate, and if this is an easier snack to assemble on a plate. It just looks better on the plate. So I will send some of these with your, with your um, supplies as well. All right, so just so you know, the grapes will come washed, but the apples will not. I washed this apple, but you're going to need to wash the apples when you get them before you eat them, okay? Now, this also is um, something that's gonna require grown-ups to help you, for sure, because there's a lot of cutting. Sorry, grown-ups. Um, but it's just so cute, I couldn't pass it up. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut kind of close to our core, but try not to cut into our core if we can. We're gonna cut off a side of our apple, of our green apple. This is not the sharpest knife in the world, which is not a good choice. 
Okay, so I didn't do a real great job with that. So I am going to cut off just a little bit more. Boy, this worked a lot better when I did it the first time. Not on camera. <laughs> All right. So I cut off that little piece and then I am going to cut out a little bit of the core so we're not eating apple seeds. Okay? All right. Now, this is going to be the um, the bottom of our creature that we're making, our Minnesota animal. Now, I because I need it to sit a certain way, I am going to slice off just kind of at an angle a little bit of this apple. The extra pieces that are edible, you can certainly eat. But for this project, I'm going to slice that little piece off. Now, I'm going to go down and do kind of the same thing on this side of the apple. Try not to get so close to the core this time if I can. We'll see how this one looks. Oh yeah, I did a better job this time on this one. Okay. Don't need this part, but you can certainly eat it. There's lots of good eating parts on that one too. All right. Next, we are going to just kind of put this little piece together. You're going to take this and connect it kind of like this. It almost looks like, I don't know, you guys are too young to know who, who Pac-Man is, but it almost looks like a Pac-Man. Um, your parents might know what I'm talking about. So when I do that, I'm going to take these toothpicks and I'm going to slide them through from the top and try to get as far down as I can into that apple. I didn't do a real great job with that one. Let's see if I can push it a little bit further. Of course, it worked really, really well when I did it before. So I'm going to push that guy down. There we go. And now the other one, on the other side, same thing. Push that down. All right. Oh, the other thing I forgot to do ahead of time. You gotta take off just a little bit here, mom and dad, off the bottom, or it slides around too much. I took a little piece of my um, toothpick off there, but okay. You get the general idea. All right, now the grapes. You need four grapes. Two of them, you're gonna cut in half. Each of them in half. You're gonna cut little triangles out of them. So it looks like three toes. Camera's over there, okay? And you're gonna put those down here. You'll need one in, two in the front and two in the back. Of course, any of these extra little pieces, you can just pop them in your mouth if you want. Of course, they're good. Good to eat. So here's some for the back. There we go. I'll turn it around and make sure I'm getting it. There we go. All right. There's our feet. Now, for this one, this one's really tricky. But Mom and Dad can do this. You're going to cut circle a little bit bigger than the big part of this chocolate chip so you're going to cut that out and just pop that little circle out of there and then you're going to slide this onto your toothpick we'll do the same thing with this one Now 
cut out of it and slide this one down our toothpick. All right, we're almost done. Now we're gonna grab a chocolate chip and stick it in there. And another chocolate chip and stick it in there. All right, you've probably figured out what he is by now, right? We got extra chocolate chips, but that's never a bad thing. You can share them with your mom and dad, especially mom, she would really appreciate it. Anyway, last thing we're gonna do. My son went out and bought these and they're the kind that have the little tattoos on them. And I also will have some fruit by the foot in there too, so that you can choose from. But basically I wanted red fruit snacks. Because you can just take a little piece off of there. I like to fold it up a little bit um, on the ends too. So it looks a little bit more smooth. And then I just stick it right in there. And there we have it. My little friend the frog. You might not like green apples. They're pretty sour. Um, if that's the case, I did put in a red Fuji apple, which is not so sour, and it's pretty, um, pretty juicy apple. Um, but these are pretty good. So if you like sour apples, you'll like these green ones. And they also look more like a frog. All right? Enjoy your snack.